Why are you so against Muslims or Islam? Right. So, no, he asked the question first. He, he asked the question first. So, ladies and gentlemen, he asked the question, why am I so against Muslims slash Islam? Let me be clear. I'm against Islam. I'm not against Muslims. As a Christian, I'm taught to love all people, and that includes Muslims. And so, I love all Muslims. But that doesn't mean that I have to be a fool. That I have to believe that because there are some good Muslims, that that means Islam is good. A religion that allows and legitimizes slavery is not a good religion. A religion that allows and legitimizes abortion is not a good religion. A religion that allows and legitimizes divorce is not a good religion. A religion that allows and legitimizes lying is not a good religion. A religion that allows for the persecution of Christians is, and the church is not a good religion. And Islam legitimizes all of those things and many more besides. I would ask you, sir, are you against slavery? Then you are against Islam. So if you ask me, why am I against Islam? My answer is that it legitimizes slavery. We must stand against Islam because it teaches evil fruit. Like we should stand against ethno-nationalists and racists because they legitimize evil fruit. What do I call slavery? This is what I call slavery. It's what's happening in the Muslim world right now where Arabs go into South Sudan and raid Christian villages, kill the men and then kidnap black women and black children and then sell them in Islamic markets for less than you can buy a McDonald's. That's what I call slavery. And they sell them today, right now. Forget the European slave trade that's illegal. We abolished it. We white European Christians don't need to receive a lecture about slavery. It is the fact that the world is ignoring the Arab and Islamic slave trade, the only place where you can buy a black person right now as a slave is in the Islamic world. Let's talk about that. Let's oppose that, and then we can talk about reparations when we've stopped the slave trade that's going on right now. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Going once. Reparations is just as important from why do you put Islam slavery over reparations? Okay. So reparations is nowhere near as important as abolishing slavery. Which do you think is more important? Stopping and wait one second. Do you think it is more important in the first instance to stop a crime or to compensate the victim of the crime? In the first instance, in the order of priority, which is more important? Then you're throwing your, 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 your friend yourself both all together. Islam, Christianity. I'm asking you a question, you're not answering it. From the Christianity point side, from, from I'm asking you a question, answer the question. What's more important? Stop it, right, right this second, there are black Africans being sold as Arabs, right? Do you think that the world should perhaps stop that from happening? And is it possibly more important to stop that from happening right now or to pay reparations for a crime we stopped 300 years ago? Right now. Don't, you don't need to think, bro. Why, why are you even embarrassed, bro? 
Because in Sharia law, So it's right now, right? Yeah. Right. So let's do that. But the point is, if you are going, and this goes back to your very first question, if you're going to oppose the slave trade, then you're opposed to something intrinsically Islamic. Because Islam permits and teaches the continuation of slavery. It legitimizes the continuation of slavery. And so, if you are a good person with any kind of moral fiber, any kind of, kind of moral constitution, any kind of moral character, you won't be ashamed, as I am not ashamed to oppose Islam for that reason. What would you like to say to that? I don't oppose Islam. So you don't oppose slavery? I do, strong. So you do oppose Islam? It comes in, in, in different forms. Cheap labor, not, not, not letting yourself worth, how much you're willing to accept, how much you're not willing to accept. Yeah. So this is what we call cognitive dissonance. Okay. Cognitive dissonance is when you say two contradictory statements. You have said, statement A, I am against slavery. Contradiction to that is I am not against Islam. It follows that if Islam permits slavery and you oppose slavery, you are against Islam. That's just logic, bro. Now you can either swallow the red pill or you can't. It's up to you whether you've got the Does plasticity of mind. Say slavery is okay as well. Yes or no? No. The Bible doesn't say that. No. Right, so let me answer that question. Okay. This is a mistake that lots of people make when they engage a Christian. They talk as if it's whatever their opinion is versus the Bible, right? That isn't how Christians use the Bible. This book, I hold in my hand, I believe every word of it, right? But my religion has a prism by which I interpret this Bible. It's called the covenantal system. In the new covenant, Christ says, I have come to set the captives free. It's a messianic prophecy that he's quoting from Isaiah. And when Isaiah was talking about the captives, he was talking about the slaves. And Christ was, when he was talking about setting slaves free, he was talking about it in the ultimate sense, our slavery to sin and the devil. He's come to set us free. But that inspired Christians and has done for 2,000 years to oppose and abolish the slavery and slave trade multiple times in history. Multiple times we've abolished slavery. Lots of people don't know that. They only know about the most recent one in time of William Wilberforce. But did you know that William the Conqueror abolished slavery in England in 1068? Are you aware that Roman Empire abolished slavery in the 5th century? What happened in the 5th century? Christians changed the laws of Rome to conform more to the teachings of Christ. Uh, Louis the, I think it was the, the 11th or 10th or maybe 9th. I'm not, I'm not sure which Louis, but it's around that one of those. He abolished the slave trade in France in the 13th century. He said that anyone who comes into France by the act of putting their foot on French soil, they're automatically free under French law. So Christians have abolished slave tree multiple times. But Islam has never abolished slavery once, except under coercion by the Western world. Do you know when Saudi Arabia abolished slavery? 1968, or was it 1962? You could still be a legal slave in Saudi Arabia in the 1960s. You know that time when you were fighting against apartheid in America? Slavery was legal in Arabia and had been for 1400 years. Islam dominated in the Arabian Peninsula for 1400 years. If it was intrinsic to Islam to stop slavery, they could have done it at any time, but they never did. And they never have. People are still being bought and sold as slaves in the Muslim world today. So let's oppose that. And if you oppose that, you are opposing Islam.
So I'll ask you again, do you oppose slavery and therefore do you oppose Islam? Islam, no. Islam, no. Are you a Muslim? No. Okay. So you're okay with Muslims buying and trading slaves? No, I'm not. So you would oppose those Muslims who buy and trade slaves? They go by a certain book which they're they, 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 they upholding to. Thank you. So you're right. They, there you go. You got it. The Christian faith don't really follow the Christian Bible. No offense, but you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. You really don't know what you're talking about. Because what you're, what you're doing is you're absorbing ignorant people's criticism of Christianity and you're re well, and your person, then you don't know enough Christians, bro. Okay. You just don't know enough Christians. And uh, I would also suggest it probably means that you don't know the Bible well enough okay. either, because lots of Christians follow religious teachings. Today, the ones that are going into the Muslim world to stop Muslims owning slaves are Christians. It's Christian missionaries who are going in Sudan and buying slaves to set them free. That's what Christians are doing while Muslims are kidnapping people and selling them as slaves. And here's the problem that I have with your position. I think you lack moral courage. I think you lack moral courage. I genuinely do. Because on one hand, you say that you oppose slavery. You say that you oppose slavery. But you won't oppose a book which you acknowledge legitimizes slave trade. And that's cowardly. And we as Christians believe that cowards go to hell. Christians are going to prison for what they believe in. We're being arrested for what we believe in. We're being killed for what we believe in. That's what's happening in the UK. But you don't hear about it because the left wing media never tells you. The reality is Christians are following our faith. Give me an example where we're not following our faith. Okay. Right? The reality is there are, of course, bad Christians. Like there are bad Muslims. Right? There are Muslims that don't want to follow their religion. So they're against marrying children because they're not following what their religion teaches. Are you opposed to marrying little children? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So if a book allows you to marry little children, should you oppose it? Depends once again. How, Depends on what? How book uh, how old the book is. Yeah. And they're following it by the book. Obviously, so you're saying then Right. So let's say I have a religious book yeah. that's uh, one thousand four hundred years old. And it says white people enslave and kill black people. And I did that. Would you oppose me? Yes. Right. But what happens if I said, no, my book says it's okay. Is that a defense? <laughs> Is it a defense? <laughs> it's not a defense. So in other words, right, because you're black, if I had a book that said that it was okay to enslave you and to kill you, you would say, because my book said it, it's not a defense. But yet you're not willing to say that about Islam. All I've done is replace, all I've done is replace a particular practice and a particular book. But the logic has remained the same. And this is cognitive it's dissonance. Like Torah though, isn't it? What? Torah. If you're all Jew, you're above every other person. Right, so let's so uh, yeah. What's the difference there? Right, so let's address that. Against the Torah. Are you against the Torah? Right, so let's address that. Okay. Because this is this is where a lot of people don't understand how Christians read the Bible. We have a covenantal system. And in that covenantal system with the coming of the Messiah, the boundary wall, the separation between Jews and the Goyim, the nations, the Gentiles, is tore down. That's what it says in Galatians, right? Or is it Ephesians? One of those two letters. The separate, the wall of division, the separating wall is torn down and now there's no division between Jew and Gentile. We're all one in Christ. So am I opposed to a rabbinic Jew that wants to create a separation between Jew and Goyim, Jew and Gentile? Yes, I am opposed to the rabbis. I oppose their teaching. Why? Because I believe in the new covenantal uh, establishment. 
And we Christians read the Bible through the New Covenant. So it, it doesn't actually work to point out things in the Old Testament that we Christians believe has been fulfilled. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's not, you can't, you can't point to the Torah to try and legitimize the Quran. Because Muslims follow the Quran, we believe that the Torah has been fulfilled in Jesus. And that means that a new covenant has been established that is different from the covenant that was given on, to Moses at Mount Sinai and that it is not like that covenant. That's quoting from Jeremiah, the prophet. Do you see my point? I understand your point, yeah. Yeah? Yes. But I want to challenge you again because I still think that you're coward, not... Yeah? Well, I, I do think you're a moral coward. <laughs> I do. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, here, to, I'm not here to take prisoners, bro. Right? You've got to be challenged because only through challenge do you grow. If you go to the gym and your gym instructor says, just lift weights that are easy, do you put on muscle? No. Right. So the only way we grow in truth and we grow in moral character is when our failings are challenged. So I'm not challenging you out of any kind of hatred or... No, or right. prejudice. Yeah, yeah. I'm challenging you because I see an inconsistency in your thinking. So I exposed an inconsistency in your thinking. And it's the same kind of inconsistency that our liberal society has. They'll say, liberals will say things like, I'm opposed to slavery. But they won't say, I'm opposed to Islam that legitimizes and practices slavery. That's inconsistent. I, I show, I've demonstrated the, uh, the cognitive dissonance in your thinking because I just swapped out the words Islam for my book, the Quran for my old book, which I said was 1400 years old. And I swapped out slavery for sp a specific kind of slavery, the slavery of black people by white people. So white people is replaced by Muslims and black people is replaced by the Kuffar. But when I said white people and black people in my 1400 year book, you said, you'd oppose it and that me saying it's in my book is not a justification. But then when I reinsert Muslims and Kuffar and Quran, suddenly you say, no, 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 I, I don't oppose that. That is an example of cognitive dissonance. And you've learned that from a liberal culture. Any other questions? Okay. So, as Christians, we should oppose Islam. And all of you liberals, you're suffering from cognitive dissonance.